Hey guys, how's it going? Mr. Mitchell here. In this video, we're going to go over wave particle duality. So let's get started. Now, wave particle duality was also seen in the higher physics course, but we're going to expand on it a little bit in the advanced higher physics course. It says here that modern physics now takes the view that light can act both like a wave and like a particle without contradiction. This is called wave particle duality. And we'll just look now at how a particle and a wave actually differ. So the term particle is used to describe localised phenomena that transport mass and energy, whereas the term wave is used to describe spread out phenomena that carry energy but no mass. So both particles and waves can carry energy, but remember waves have no mass and particles do have mass. And what we mean by localised phenomena is that particles can have a well-defined position, whereas waves are spread out phenomena so they don't have a well-defined position. And we have evidence for electromagnetic radiation behaving like a particle, such as the photoelectric effect which was seen in a previous video, or for electromagnetic radiation behaving like a wave, such as an interference and diffraction. And one type of this evidence that we'll look at specifically is called electron diffraction. So it says evidence also exists that electrons can demonstrate wave-like properties by electron diffraction, which in general sounds pretty weird, but we're going to look at how experimental observations have shown that electrons, i.e. particles, have wave-like behaviour. So in electron diffraction, G.P. Thomson bombarded thin films of metal with an electron beam. He obtained diffraction rings like the ones shown below, which provided evidence of electrons behaving like a wave. Now these circular rings in this diffraction pattern are typically what you would see in the diffraction pattern for light, i.e. when you pass light through a circular aperture you would see these rings. But in electron diffraction, when electrons pass through a tiny opening or slit, they also produce diffraction fringes. When there is more than one slit, the electrons that fall on the same location produce constructive interference fringes. The pattern produced as a result is shown below and can be seen to be analogous with the pattern produced for light in Young's double slit experiment, which remember is when you pass monochromatic light such as laser light through a double slit and you see a pattern of constructive and destructive interference fringes. And this is typically what we would see for electrons as well if we pass them through a double slit. Just to show you a quick simulation to help you visualise this. Here we have a double slit with slits A and B and we've got a screen over on this side here and it says a single particle is fired at the slit. The motion of a particle between the slits is not shown, we can only observe the impact at the screen. So if we click play here you can see that when the particle hits the slits it's going to appear at some point on the screen over at this side and you see it's pretty random as to where it's going to hit. It then says notice that the impacts only occur where constructive interference is expected with more impacts around the central maximum. And then there's a question posed here which is how does a single particle produce an interference pattern? Does it interfere with itself? Well the answer to this is that this is not a valid question. Our apparatus is designed to detect the particle at the screen. We can make no comment on what happens between leaving the source and arriving at the screen. And interestingly we could modify the apparatus to find which slit the particle goes through by including detectors near A and B. So here we have detectors A and B. So if we turn these detectors on, then you'll see that we can click play and it's going to add one to the counter for where the particle is passing through. But when we do this, you'll notice that the particle is only appearing in one of two places. And this is because, if you look here, it says with the detectors on, we can observe which slit a particle passes through, but we lose the interference pattern. When we set up an experiment to observe a particle property, we observe a particle property and not the wave property. So because we're trying to define the position of the particle at the slits, then we lose the idea of the wave interference pattern which would happen over at the screen. And you'll see that we only end up with two fringes, which is just straight on from where the slits are. So the particles are literally just passing straight through the slits in this case, onto the screen. So this idea of not being able to observe both wave-like and particle-like properties at once is due to the wave-particle duality. And there's a conclusion here which says that it is impossible to simultaneously measure both wave and particle properties. And this leads on to the idea of the uncertainty principle which we'll see in a future video. Going back to the notes, we'll finish by looking at another piece of evidence here which is Compton scattering. Arthur H. Compton performed an experiment in which he observed the scattering of x-rays from electrons in a carbon target. He discovered that the scattered x-rays had a longer wavelength than the instant x-rays. Compton explained and modelled the data by assuming a particle, i.e. photon nature, for light and applying the conservation of energy and momentum to the collision between the photon and the electron. So if we look at this picture here, you see we have the instant X-ray photon coming in and hitting off this electron which is stationary. 
Then what he saw was that the electron would recoil off to one side and the X-ray would scatter to the other side but with a longer wavelength. It then says the scattered photon is lower energy and therefore a longer wavelength due to a loss of momentum. Compton's experiment gave clear evidence of particle-like behaviour by electromagnetic radiation. So this involved thinking about the instant X-rays as being photons of light, i.e. particles, rather than waves. So this gives us evidence of particle-like behaviour of light. So just to help you visualise this, I'm going to show you a quick simulation. So here we have an instant photon on the right, and this is going to strike the electron. And then you'll see the shift in the wavelength there and the deflected recoiling electron. That's all for this video folks, thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.